I am absolutely loving this vacuum attachment that I made for my drill press. Actually, you could use it in different areas. And you don't need a shaper to make this, although the shaper helped me create these interior dimensions of 2.469 or 62.7 millimeters exactly. Let me show you how I did this. So I start by anchoring down a couple of scrap pieces of Baltic birch. And here I'm using the bar on the shaper to establish the working height. It's a fantastic system. And there you go, it's perfect. So I start by setting up a grid, and a good way to think about a grid is similar to a sheet of grid paper. This way, the machine knows exactly where it's at in an XY orientation. X is side to side, and Y would be essentially uh, toward you and away from you. You may have noticed I've installed a quarter inch router bit backwards. In other words, the shaft is hanging down, and we'll use that as a reference. And then right on the machine, we'll go with a new grid. You can see the bit drop down. It makes contact with the edge. Then you move it over to the next place, that's X. Then around the corner, and you've established Y axis. Fantastic. And we'll drop the router bit back in, and we're ready to go. Now that I have a grid established, and actually there's three different ways to make a grid, but here I'm just gonna measure approximately where I want in, this, in these scrap pieces of wood, and I can use that grid system to place that circle. The circle was just um, also found on board. I just punch in the number, 2.469. And the machine will remind you to do a Z touch. That is the Z axis. You can see the machine drop down right there. And as simple as that, we are ready to start cutting. I love this machine. So I'm cutting about an eighth inch deep at a time, making several passes. It's just easier on the bit. And I'm also not cutting exactly 2.469. That number is punched in, but I'm offsetting by about 10 thousandths. Then my last pass, I can clean all that up. So I need to make two of these cuts or these donuts, whatever you want to call them. So same thing, drop the bit down an eighth inch, drop it down another eighth inch, and keep progressing until I'm just about through this three quarter thick Baltic birch, 18 millimeter Baltic birch, yeah? So I'm just about all the way through, and here at this point, I can remove that offset to where there's zero offset, basically, and the bit will be cutting an interior cut of exactly 2.469, or 2 and I believe that was mm, 15, 30 seconds, uh, or 62.7 millimeters. Beautiful. Now, could you cut this with a hole saw? Sure. Uh, but I love the fact that I was able to grab a pair of calipers, mic the outside of a, an extension for the, vac, for the shop vac, and then punch in that number, and it's going to cut that exactly. That is a beautiful thing, and it's quick and easy. All right, not, uh, <laughs> not that much to see here. Just a couple of pieces of Baltic birch with these holes, and I cut them um, at the chop saw, I believe and then separated that at the bandsaw. And I wanted to see how good they fit. And of course, these uh, extensions are tapered, but where I measured them, they are perfect. Perfect fit. And then here I'm just using a simple scribe to uh, mark the perimeter, the outside, I should say, the outside, so the pieces aren't square, basically. And yeah, I suppose I could have cut these with the shaper, but um, I just thought, I'll just use a chop saw. It's quick, easy, right? I can't get completely reliant on CNC, <laughs> not in my shop. So it's highly unlikely that I'll use this scrap fall off for anything else. So this was a template that I made using the shaper to create these handles for the Domino Sled 500. Just creates this plunging action. Anyway, so I thought this will be perfect. I can take one of these, snap that in place, put another one here. And in hindsight, I probably should have made these a little bit wider, but uh, I they were actually laid out at three quarter and then I goofed, but should be fine with a couple of pins and some glue. I'll put those into place like that. 
boom. And then this I can clamp to my drill press and I will have excellent vacuum. Fabulous. Quick and easy, yeah? And I added a couple of uh, pins and some glue. Should hold it just fine. So all that dried for about, I don't know, a couple hours. And I'll pre-drill and add some screws. And a cool little trick here, I'm adding some wax to the screws to make them insert easier. It's actually uh, my chapstick. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's kind of funny, but should be very effective, right? Yeah, man. Oh, and by the way, I decided to add magnets, and yesterday I used it at the table saw. I am so glad I did. Fantastic. Yeah, I need to probably make another <laughs> insert. That thing is um, looks a little tired. But this thing is freaking awesome. The little vacuum attachment fits perfectly. I'll chuck up the hose. I can put position that right where the bit clears the end of the vacuum. Clamp that dude in place. Quick, easy, and effective. And I won't use the light on the drill press. I'll turn on my little flashlight here for um, what's known as low raking light that I talk about all the time. It just helps me see those little dimples so much easier and quicker. And you can see this vacuum is pulling that dang near 100% vacuum. That is awesome. This little attachment was primarily made for these domino docks. I make hundreds of these parts and I needed something to pull up those chips with really good vacuum. And man, this thing works amazingly well. And there you have it. I really hope you got some good use out of this. And remember, click, like, subscribe, learn. Thanks a ton.